Всім привіт! Hi everyone! I'm Tetiana Holota, book lover and author of the Booksy blog. And today I'm the moderator of the event held within the 27th International Book Forum. Special thanks to the Ukrainian Cultural Foundation for their support. Today we'll talk about limericks, wacky points and humorous books for children of Sashko Dermansky. Hi, good to see you. It's been a prolific year for you as an author six books for an author that's a big achievement surely that is really so it's a bit uh, immodest there are years that are book less while there are authors that take years to deliver a book and I produced six but it so happened let me demonstrate them I have three of them So the first is a book of limericks. By the way, I have some books to show as well. Great. So that one was published by Crocus Company, Wacky Poems, a book collection by Talant, publishing house, Vikusia Stories, in UA, publishing house, Magliata and Krokokov, publishing house Tessa, and two, ba- two books from the new portal, publishing house Nobody's Cruel and Choosing Day. So let's discuss all of these books a bit, and shall we start with Liberics? Fine. And uh, I would also like to add that there will be more books to come this year. I hope by the end of the year, We'll have one or two more books to add. There's some books in the pipeline. Oh, that's wonderful news for all of your book fans. I'm a great fan of yours and a fan of your books. Now my daughter is a big fan of your books too. So we'll be all very happy about the upcoming books. Thank you for that. So shall we talk about limericks first? How was the book born? It's very unusual. It's a very unusual verse format for Ukraine. I've never read anything similar in Ukraine, so tell us a bit about that. I was thinking about that once the book had come out. The limerick genre is something I knew from childhood. I read Edward Lear's limericks, a very tiny book containing limericks. When I started writing and when I worked as a journalist for Stashka Journal, I used to write some limericks. So I ended up collecting a few, but I didn't know what to do about them. So when I had enough of them, I started reading them at meetings. I started showing them to publishers, but the publishers weren't sure they're quite texts for children as they're heavy on irony on adult irony too. So, until a certain time, these texts just rested and bit their time in the drawer until I offered uh, Narkis Derfurova, who has a Crocus publishing house, to have a look at them. And she decided to go ahead with the book and both of us were very happy when Oleg Petrov-Suzanevsky, who is a great illustrate and artist join the team and his uh, style is identifiable on the books of this uh, wacky this funny book and the book came out eventually and I thought wait a minute is there such a thing as a separate book of limericks in the Ukrainian literature No, authors did write limericks. There are some that I wouldn't dare to read aloud on live air. They may have produced some cycles of limericks somewhere in the published editions, but a book of limericks has never come out to the best of my knowledge. So this must be a first. So it's a landmark of a sort. And I'm happy that I authored this book with the publishing house Crocus because the words play into plums. 
Common sense is absolutely no good. They are weirdos to all tastes. Even the lines and rhymes are bizarre. Can you read some more limericks from this collection? Surely, there are a few sections. They are grouped by topic. So there are cat limericks. We start with cat limericks. Let me read a few at random from each section. There was a very well-bred lady of Poltava who used to say hi to cats. The cats would have no clue, but she would keep saying good afternoon to the cats of Poltava. There are sea limericks. There was an octopus who got his feet all tangled in a knot. Hands would be handy, but that's what he hasn't got. Then there are some real-life limericks about strangers from different countries, cities of Ukraine and beyond. So let me read you a businessman from the capital of Blore who came to the nearest village. He caught mosquitoes and took them to the market, three pennies per village. So that's a hipster style businessman. Uh, Sashko, can I read a limerick from this collection, one of my favorites? There was a lady from Russia who bit her teeth into her neighbor. Why did she bit? Because she's quite rabbit, that vicious lady from Russia. So, and let me ask you, when I read this limerick, I was a bit taken aback to find it in a collection of books for children. So I wanted to ask you, does culture and children's literature, can it be beyond politics? Surely not. Well, you see, you like the book. I like it. Many adults love it too. I'm not quite certain that it's entirely and solely for children. There's many books for children. Many of my books for children are also geared for the adult re readers. As for politics and literature and culture overall, I don't really see the topic for discussion as such, since culture it's a mighty weapon, the word, the literature, a fearsome. We don't care the politicians bickering. We know how the Russian, the so-called Russian world, conquered first in our culture and everyday life, and the military aggression only remained to follow. So I really cannot imagine how some of the authors can publish books in Russia. So your political stance shines through clearly in your books. Is it your manifestation of life or are you doing it to bring up kids? I like to get this message across to the adults sooner. You see, I don't think we should talk politics to kids, but we should talk about the love of our country to kids and the allusions to political realities and uh, troubles are things that I address to the adult readers of these books. And I know that parents read the books to themselves or to their kids, and these are things I need to talk about. I can't make myself talk about it on other platforms like Facebook. I hardly ever write anything on Facebook or I'm not very active in that regard. But as for my stories, my books, I can put the message in that would be veiled for kids, but that would be clear for adults. And that's something that I care about. Thank you. The adults can appreciate your 
stance and hopefully kids when they grow up they will appreciate it too shall we do some more limericks oh, by the way do I resemble the man on the cover yes you do like a splitting image do you like the way they depict you on books a splitting image and that's not the only book where you were drawn I like it I saw a draft of the book cover. This idea wasn't uh, voiced by Oleg. He didn't tell me. I think he drew it and only then he showed it to us. So this guy looks like someone we know. A very nice book cover. And the illustrations in the book are fabulous. My daughter is six and she poured over the books. She loves uh, looking at books. We read them to her, but she loves looking at books for children. And she took a long time studying the book. And that, in my opinion, shows that the books for children really captured a child's heart. You are known as a prose writer, but your second book this year is uh, wonderful poems drawn by Svetlana Medvedeva. I know that this book contains your early poems when you used to work for Stashka Journal and Svetlana is someone you used to work with there, so tell us a bit about that. We were enthralled, we kept reading and rereading it. My uh, daughter Slata will bring the book since I don't have it at hand. Well, this book comprised poems written at different periods and a lot of old poems. Basically, my first poems for children that I tried my hand in. The collection starts with the uh, little mushroom poem and on to the bear cup. These are two of the very first five or six poems that I took to the editorial office of Stashka Journal. That must have been the year 2000 or the end of 1989. So I wrote five or six tiny poems, like the little mushroom got on a stump, looking from his cap, no rain can get me wet, I don't care about the thunderstorm. So these are tiny poems and I wrote a few of them and I decided I would try and look for an extra job in addition to my teaching profession and I thought, as I was looking at the publications for kids, I looked at the Stashka journal, so I found their contact details, their address, and went over there, and I showed them there. And I wrote some more, some of them were published. I used to work for Stashka for a long time, and over the time I collected quite a few. I never intended to write a collection of poems. Starting 2004, I had novels and prose books and I had a few of them, but I never had a collection of poems. Although I always used to read poems when I met my readers and they liked them, but I never somehow published them. Until, finally, in 2015, if I remember correctly, I published the first book hippos are not bears and this year finally we published this book some are newer but mostly they are older poems tiny and bigger and i probably should read some more a cat meets a cat by the swamp Hi, cat. Hi, cat. What are you doing by this swamp? 
eating fish and what trouble brought you here and I am dear cat drinking tea with a hippo by the swamp zip I don't know whether I should read longer texts so I'm opting for something more sizable there is a Barabaka dog poem which I also included in my first collection, The Hippos Are Not Bears. Barabaka dog is no ordinary dog. Barabaka dog is an unusual dog. The Barabaka dog has a shaggy tail and Barabaka dog has a hungry mouth. Barabaka dog chats with mists, climbs onto roof to howl its songs. Barabaka dog has some strange signs on its back, scribbles and doodles, and bird dogs on his side. His eyes are like two big pumpkins, and like a horse he has a mane and a saddle. Just money, that's what the Barabaka dog has never had in his pockets. Barabaka dog. What kind of dog is he? A barker, a singer, and a vagabond? A worker or the lazy bones? This strange Barabaka. A hard worker or the bones? A good dog or a bad dog? He's just a Barabaka doggy. Barabaka doggy. Just a simple Common Barabaka, a friend of kids, he dreams a kind-hearted Barabaka so that there'd be no tears but only joy in this world. Well, shall I read some more? Or shall we talk some more? I have another question. Your works are published in different publishing houses. I think this book was ready and only then you found a publisher to print it, so it was finished. Was it that way? Not quite. You see, first the publisher came round. I was recommended by a colleague, Metro Kuznetsov. He's Kuzko Kuzyakin. He's known as Kuzko Kuzyakin. And the publishing house Talant wanted to do a book with me, so I suggested doing poems. So they started working on poems. I suggested Svetlana Medvedeva that you mentioned today as an illustrator. She's my old-time colleague from the Stashka journal. We've long haven't seen and haven't worked only touched base through social networks a bit. And I long wanted Svetlana to draw something for me. I like her works. So, eventually the book came out. And now, another book for different publishing house is in the making by Svetlana too. Did you ever want it to be an author for one publishing house, to be an exclusive writer just for one? Tatiana, I don't know how to answer that question. I may have wanted to write for just one house, but there must not be a publishing house that would say, here's what we can offer you, don't publish anywhere else, and we'll make sure uh, we give you a good deal. Some people may not like my poems. Once I showed my books to Ivan Malkovich, suggesting we publish a book of poems, but he may have thought they were not masterful enough, or he found it hard to find an illustrator, while it takes a lot of time to write and illustrate such books for Ababa Halamaha Publishing House, because Ivan Malkovich is very thorough and meticulous about the illustrations, as you know. And uh, at times, the text is quite good, but the publishing may not see it as a book that it should put out. Say, that's not our book, they could say. 
so you show things to others who may want to cooperate and it so happens that I publish in different houses. Have you ever wanted to go to do it alone without the publishing house? Hello? Well, from time to time I do think these thoughts. But so far I haven't dared. I know that there are many things that I don't worry about, will need to be dealt with or will need to find a team of people who know things I don't. So surely working with publishing houses is convenient because you can just focus on writing and think about the next text while leave the promotion, sales and all the other things to the publishing house and they should know how to do it well. Unfortunately, the book market is evolving and seemingly there are quite a lot of books out there, but the prints runs are not growing as quickly as they could. Three, five thousand seems okay for Ukraine. Many books are republished. Many books are published from time to time. The Wondrous Monster is a hit of a kind. It's been republished 16 times over the years and it stayed on the market, on the bookshelves over many years, it's still in demand and republished. So the wondrous monster, maybe I could publish it myself one day. I have your signed book, it's signed, addressed to me and my future husband 10 years ago, that was. Enjoy. And now my husband reads this book every night to my daughter. They finish this book and they're now reading the second part. And very soon they'll be reading the third sequel. My daughter is excited. She's six and we are stocked up. I used to read it even before I had kids. I know you have a lot of adult readers who read your books and love them and wait for a sequence and re wait for the next continuation. I have my deepest respect for them. They must be very much like me, as they like books for kids. Children's books are very moving. They are very emotional. They uh, wake up an inner child in you. That's the best part of life. And those who love and cherish books for children are my friends. I can see Zlata, your daughter, attending the meeting. Yes, yeah, she's joining us. Hi. She visits live meetings with me. I know she's a book lover, she reads voraciously and she has a lot of books owing to her daddy and she must be one of the first readers and listeners of your books is she she does listen but mostly she reads a finished book and Lana my elder when she was a younger girl she used to listen to section by section as they were written And uh, Zlata has a lot of other books to read now, so I let her read the finished product. And she loves reading it. I think we can make a gradual transition to Vikusia's stories. It's a wonderful book. It's a collection of short stories. And I think that the prototype was uh, based on Sashko Dermansky. Not such a big belly in real life, luckily not, but I 
take parallels between this story with the daddy, mother and two girls and elder and the younger and your family and I thought maybe it's a real story based on life, your childhood of your daughters. Well, it's yes and no. This family does have a prototype and these stories are real. These stories I heard from my friend, Andriy Kuzmin. He was involved in publishing the book. He has two daughters, they are grown up now. And once he said, Sashko, look, I have such a lot of different memories about my girls growing up. So I started writing them down. Can I show them to you? Shall we do something about it? And when he wrote down the stories, I was a bit skeptical at first, but then he read them to me from his real-life stories, from their conversations, and I realized they had a lot of things familiar to many families especially those who have girls in the family. And these special warm connections between the father and the daughters. It's a real story for every family. It's a very typical phenomenon. I recognized a lot of things that didn't happen to us, but could have happened to us, but it was very close and it could have happened to us. So I started working on the stories. Surely I made some things up and I added a few things. I wrote them the way I do write, with a bit of humor, moving, so that I could say something important. And I think I succeeded. And Andri was very happy. As a minimum, I made one person happy. He was very happy with the finished product. So, it's a story about us and not quite about us. It's about Andrei's family and about many other families who have girls, who have a daddy, who have a mommy, and all these things and psychological moments growing and becoming daddy and daughters. I think they are very recognizable and close to many Ukrainian families. Very recognizable. I recognize my family in this book. I left it for my daddy to read. Every daddy who has a daughter has a duty to read this book as it's very, very moving. It's like a mini encyclopedia. Indeed, it's very realistic. I don't know how finely you sense these uh, moments and weave them in, mixed with the humor. That's a great talent, Sashko, that you have. I don't know how you make it, but every new book has the same moving touch, something that really moves you deeply. So, let me, I must be growing old. Let me see that Sashko Dermanski has his website, dermanski.com.ua, and you can buy all of his books in there, all that are published. You can buy them and you can get an autograph too. Is that right? That's the most important thing, because you can buy them anywhere, but you can't buy them autographed. I'd like to ask you about the website. Will there be some merchandising to sell? You know, Tatiana, I'm a bit lazy. I haven't researched it well enough to know how to do it, how to promote it. But I thought that sooner or later I will need to deal with it and perhaps 
do some YouTube. I know that the future is there. We'll be uh, needing to look for new pathways to readers, to kids, to their parents. So I'm thinking about it. I am. But I think I need a good assistant to help me out. I see you have t-shirt of Mos Impalanta. You can buy a t-shirt with the wonderful monster. So that's the t-shirt you're wearing, right? You can use his uh, illustrations too, perhaps. Well, it's a question of copyright, because I don't own any of the illustrations of the books, but there are quotations with Jadan quotes. Why can't I make some quotations from The Wonderful Monster? I think it's all feasible. Now we talk about illustrators. I wonder, how many illustrations should there be? Some are heavily illustrated and some are scarcely. Should there be illustrations in the books for kids? Every author and every reader would want to have as many illustrations and them to be very inventive and masterful and different and colorful. But there are publishing houses that have their own perception and the format of the book too. If you take the Kuzina stories, that's for younger kids than the Mary book. Mary is pitched for older kids, I think more like teenage, although you could read it even at six it will still be relevant. There are some books that are not possible without illustrations, while there are other books and texts where the text is the most important thing and illustrations can be more scarce or contain no pictures at all, like the wonderful, the monstrous monster. I have to trust my publisher, who tells you, look, Harry Potter sells without any pictures at all, and it's admired everywhere. I'd like to have some minimal, at least black and white, illustrations in all of my books. But that doesn't always happen. There'll be reprints, some books will be reprinted in other publishing houses, and perhaps they will do some different pictures, more of them than before. I asked the readers of the book C what they would like to ask Sashko Dermansky, and I got a few questions. I really like to hear them. So, first thing, they'd like to know where you get your ideas for books. They're all around us. It's from the environment, from anything. Ideas can come from anywhere. You hear, you see, you sense something. It happens differently, really. First thing, Luka happened from one word that my daughter said. The hippies are not bears. It's a word. Bear, mispronounced by little Zlata. So I thought, that's cute, those are bears that love honey. It's hard to say where they come from. They seemingly come out of nowhere. So there's nothing and then a wonderful monster comes out. And the whole world evolves and you inhabit it with inhabitants, they have their own trades and they get into adventures and they are seemingly there. It's hard for me to say how it happens because I find it hard to imagine that I'm writing it myself. I know myself quite well and I still can't believe that I 
could make it up, but he did. So it's hard to say how my inspiration comes when I'm in good mood and I'm full of ideas. That's when they visit me. I heard that an inspirer, not a muse, visits you. So an inspirer surely visits me. An inspirer. I engage with school kids actively. Well, I used to before the quarantine times. There were weeks when I would have four meetings or so in a school. I could even visit a few schools a day. And the kids often ask me about inspiration. So what inspired you? And therefore, they've inspired me to invent an inspirer. Because it's difficult to keep inventing something about inspiration while I don't know quite what it is. So it's a condition when you can produce something. And that's not always the case. Sometimes you can be very unproductive. You can wait for it for months and it still won't arrive. My inspiration comes when you organize yourself and you put yourself in front of the notebook and when you start delving into an idea, delving into the world you've created, then the inspiration starts coming and you write. So I thought up Inspira to tell the kids about a creature of this kind. And I think I should write a story about him. That would be fun. So the readers asks, asked about the prototypes. Other prototypes in real life. Sonia is based on my girls to some extent. There's no character that would be absolutely real life based except the daddy from Vikusia stories because the daddy is the one who told me the stories. Otherwise, these are just collective images that you can shape and bring in uh, your friends and people you know. Some banner of speaking is something I can borrow from a person I know and I can give it to a character. Some language features or language peculiarities. As for the monster, prototype. It's partially based on Winnie the Pooh and Carlson, my favorite character. I think they are quite recognizable in the monster. He's clumsy, he loves uh, good food, and he's witty. As for the prototypes of my characters, there are many, both real and book-based. Sashko, so what's your greatest dream as a writer? That's something I thought too. Uh, print runs, translations of your books. What would life be like for Sashko Dermanski as a writer if it were? Perfect, if it was your dream life that you'd like to come true. Surely, I like books to be translated. Surely, I'd like to be read by as many people as they can, and I'd like them to be filmed. That's something I'd like to happen in near future. One thing is to complain that the publishers have no interest. That would be not fair. There are publishers wanting to publish books in Ukraine, and there are quite a lot of them. 
their readers who are grateful. There's even the school literary program. I don't know how to treat it as a good thing or as a bad thing. But anyways, that's a way to promote modern writers when children learn about them in school. Then it's likely that your paths will eventually cross and kids will grow to like what you write. Somebody have this feeling that somebody needs what you write. That's a very uh, a feeling very close to the feeling of happiness. But I like to have more translations and more filming. And when that happens, then I don't know what to wish for. Maybe there's a threat that I'll get very lazy and stop writing. I don't know if that happens for someone who loves writing as much as you do, but about filming, you know, Ostap Svitvichka and his 13 troubles had to be filmed, it had to be a comedy, it even scored highest among the jury, but somehow this project was put on hold and it's now pending. As for the filming of the book, the story continues and the story is so complex and unexpectedly weird that I think, did I choose the title right, The Twelve Troubles, because the troubles continue this year. We tried again in pitching the project, but we pulled out. We had a few reasons why we backed out before the competition. There are some internal troubles in the team, and we don't know how to overcome them. But we did win the pitching round last year, but, but we didn't get the support. As a reader, I like to say that I would love watching a movie and a cartoon and a wonderful monster. They really deserve a full-screen cartoon. And then you can sell the merchandise, the uh, soft toys and the bags and t-shirts to go with the movie. It will make a wonderful movie. And we are really short of good Ukrainian movies and cartoons for kids. It would be very interesting to hear whether an author can make a living on writing, by writing books. It's a traditional kind of question that we often hear. If he tries very hard, perhaps he could. Maybe not a very luxurious lifetime, but he can still feed his family. What's short on the Ukrainian book market? The market. We are short of bookstores. I don't have any good bookstores in my district. The author has no platform to engage with his readers. There are few places to buy books. The existing bookstores can be not that good. So the print runs are small and the royalties for the author are quite small. He just gets a percentage. If you if it takes a year or two to sell 3,000 books, it's not a very good living. So you need to have a lot of books. When you have a lot of books, at least something will sell. If you have just one book, you can't really make a living of it. 
you're a serial author, we could say, because you've written a lot of series. I know that readers keep asking which series is complete and which is in the making. I never know what I, what's finished, what's not. I've been wanting to write a fourth monster sequel for four years or so. When they ask me, I'm trying, I'm really working on it. But I haven't made much progress. Apart from others, there are some offers to write something. There are some interesting projects that come out. I once wrote some texts for my music company. It's a text that had to do with Lubkasta. There are five series, and I thought the fifth would be the last one. But I think one more would be good. It could have been the end, but you can't stop with the fourth book. But if you know the book about Malaka and its adventures in the Konya, no, in the fourth book, I did something I never did before. I killed a few good characters. So the fifth part is needed to bring them back. The good thing that in your genre you can bring good characters back. As for the wonderful monster, I want to write some more. I don't have the book at hand, but the readers, those who've been reading carefully, they will notice that the character Ostap Kvitochka, it says, book first, wondrous, so they should be the second book, and then I wrote a script based on the book, and I wrote my second book. I don't know if more will come out. It's self-sufficient, doesn't require a sequel. So, there'll be one more Maliata, hopefully one more for a monster. For Janesko, there are four books already. There'll be some short stories for young readers. And these will be the stories from the fourth book and some very new ones. What about Mary? Will it be continued? Probably we should do a prequel about what happened before the story to give it better context to know this game that started it all. Because the book ends with a number of questions as I see it, that haven't been raised throughout the book, and they happen just at the end. So, I'll keep writing. I have a lot of plans. So, a lot of things need to be written. There have to be a lot of sequences. Sashko Dermanski, what can you wish your readers who listen to you, who read you, who love you, who attend you, the meetings with you? I always wish my readers to read more, to read good books, to love books, and to love people, to listen to older friends, to listen to parents. They have to know how to recommend good books and also I'd like to wish you to go back to your wonderful school rooms and we could meet and play and have fun together and I give you very sunny hugs. Stay healthy. Thank you, Sashko Dermanski, for this wonderful conversation. Let me 
I'd like to remind everyone that this event happened within the 27th VIV International Book Forum. Special thanks to Ukrainian Cultural Foundation for their support. I was the moderator with you, Tatiana Holov. A very good adventurous week for everyone. See you later.